time to kick it off. Yeah, I was just about to say, um, it has been around five minutes, so we are going to kick it off. Um, thank you everyone for joining um, and welcome to How to Create Your Own ISP with Jared and it's hosted by Brooke from Widality and Kevin from Millennium. Um, again, um, if you guys just don't mind, please make sure that you're muted at all times and for bandwidth sake, please make sure that those cameras are off so we don't lose anything on the webinar. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Kevin and Brooke. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Evan. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Jared. Um, Brooke and I work together on many different facets of this industry, and um, Jared was a very interesting person to get to know. And so we're really happy to have Jared um, join us for this webinar. So Jared, the floor is yours. We're going to ask a few questions along the way, but we want you to start off and kind of explain who you are, um, how you got to here, and why you're on this damn webinar. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so my name is Jared Mott. I own, uh, you know, as I tell all the neighbors and folks around me, I own the local um, fiber-based, uh, fiber uh, you know, internet provider around, uh, you know, around a small area around my house. Uh, I went and spent a long time, uh, you know, suffering like many people who are just on the edge of, uh, you know, city and such, uh, you know, just, just living the dream right on the edge of suburbia and next to the farms. And yeah, for, you know, I've been in this house for 20 years now and, uh, you know, uh, didn't have good internet access and kept trying different ideas, different routes of trying to solve that problem, trying to figure things out and ultimately ended up, uh, you know, having to do it myself. Uh, you know, nobody else was going to build out in this area. Uh, and so it ultimately came down to, you know, well, I guess, I guess it, you know, almost why not me or, you know, I guess it has to be me. Um, so I ended up building, uh, you know, you know, starting off with something small, building, you know, a couple miles, uh, you know, of uh, fiber and conduit to go and tap into where I could buy internet access from another company. And, you know, since then it's kind of taken off uh, and it has a little bit of its uh, it's gotten to, to have a little bit of a, you know, a mind and, you know, uncontrolled thing of its own uh, to some extent, but it's, uh, it's really taken off in the, you know, in the past couple of years. So that's, that's the high level start. So, yeah. So what gave you the confidence that you could do it? Like, what was the starting point for like, yeah, you know what, I can do this. So I, I had, uh, you know, like I've been doing computers and networking since, you know, like for a very long time, I've been on, on the internet since about, you know, almost 30 years, um, you know, in, in various different forms. And, uh, you know, I've worked for, worked for, you know, either other telecommunication companies I've done, you know, I've worked in the industry since, you know, the dial up days and ISDN and the early days of DSL and the early days of like, you know, the DOCSIS, the cable modem standards and such. Uh, and, you know, over, over time, you know, I'd, I'd risen I'd to, to go and work at uh, companies that, that ran and operated a global network. And so we would buy dark, dark fiber from people, go and light them up with DW dam systems and stuff like that. So, so I, I got a great deal of information and confidence in how, how to piece, you know, all the parts together uh, in order to, you know, to make it happen. Uh, on top of that, you know, I, I spent a lot of time you know, driving and kind of dreaming, like staring out the car window, looking at stuff, finding where all the infrastructure was around me. Uh, you know, some people like to, you know, do bird watching and stuff like that. And I, I can drive down the road, I can find the little matchsticks and poles and fuses and, you know, and, and, you know, and look at a pole and tell you about how old it is based on, you know, what, how green it is versus, you know, um, you know, you know, uh, how rotted out or something it looks. And so, um, you know, I spent a lot of time with that and, you know, I had, I, I'd spent some of my, you know, uh, historical either bonus money or fun money, um, you know, fun budget money and buying, you know, just, just the toys and tools you would need for that. So I bought, you know, a fusion splicer, you know, probably I bought my first one probably about six, seven years ago now and stuff like that. And then, you know, toyed around with kind of, you know, okay, this, this is how to make it work. And, uh, you know, and, and ultimately now, uh, you know, I've got, I, I probably have somewhere between, you know, probably almost 20 miles of fiber network that I'm responsible for. 
That's awesome. So it sounds like you have a lot of the the knowledge and the context that is needed to kind of start all of this. You also have the the motivation. And like you said, you're driving down the road and just dreaming about the possibilities. But the kind of the third component I see is, you know, that first action step. You can dream all day and have all the mo motivation in the world to do a big project like this. But what was that first action step that got you started? Uh, I, I mean, I think like anything else, you know, I finally decided, OK, I'm, I'm really serious about doing this. So I formed, you know, I went and, you know, I formed the company, you know, I went and I started down the route of getting all the paperwork in place and, mm -hmm. you know, hired somebody to do the drawings and permits and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I, you know, probably the funniest initial conversation was with my, was with my rep Antoine here, uh, who's, who I see on here, you know, is, you know, I'm, I, I show up and I'm like, you know, Hey, what, you know, so this is what I'm trying to do. And, you know, and, and that, and, uh, you know, that, that was one of the, you know, that was one of the big connector points that really kind of got me in the position. So it's like, okay, you need to, you know, really getting that supply list together, understanding what, you know, the, you know, what I would need to actually piece together for a budget. So that way I could go and, uh, actually, you know, figure out, okay, you know, I'm, you know, some people go and will spend, spend money remodeling their house to make it perfect. I, I, instead of moving or buying, you know, buying that, you know, uh, we decided to, uh, to go and, you know, take that type of money and, uh, put it into infrastructure in the ground and, you know, you know, and, you know, got permits, hired contractors, you know, bought a bunch of stuff from, you know, from millennium and, you know, still, still keep getting stuff. And it's, uh, you know, it's crazy, you know, to think about, you know, the first time I picked up, you know, just, a, just a few things. And now I've got, you know, a huge pile of, uh, you know, I've got a huge pile of empty reels sitting, <laughs> sitting there, um, you know, from all the conduit that's been used. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's really something where, you know, comparing then, you know, showing up and buying stuff and loading it in a, like, in a little Prius, like grabbing it and throwing supplies in the back of a Prius um, to, uh, you know, to what it is now, it's, you know, it's, it's a big contrast. I, uh, so I was going to ask, so you start off the business with a Prius for real, or you just use it as a reference? For real, for real. It's, it's this little blue Prius, um, you know, that, you know, and, you know, I, I have photos I've shared like in other talks and, and stuff about this where, you know, literally have, you know, a stack of handholds in the back of the Prius. <laughs> um, that that is literally literally what what happened and we're sit, sitting there with like the guys in the warehouse trying to figure out okay how, how do i fit all these in and they're just kind of looking at it like oh i don't think this is gonna work and made it fit and and, and got it going it's it's definitely uh so on that note is there anything that you would have done differently had you known what you know now um i i think I spent a lot of time doing my research, like in advance. Um, I, I think probably the only thing that I would do differently is um, I would probably have started out with higher fiber counts on some of my routes and actually put in even more conduit than I than I initially did. Um, so I started off, um, you know, I you know I started off like I think you know a lot of people kind of thinking you know okay I'm trying to pinch pennies on a budget and stuff like that. Um, and I was originally only going to put one condo in on, on all of my routes that got built. Uh, ultimately I ended up putting two in because I, I did the math and it came out to about a, an extra 60 cents a foot in labors and material, um, you know, which on the initial, you know, 11, 12,000 foot project, you know, you know, when you're talking about, you know, about, you know, five, $6,000, um, you know, of, uh, you know, of a big project, it's, you know, it's, it ends up being a, a a smaller sum of money, comparatively speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and because I did that, that let me go back. And um, when another company was building in the area or was looking to build in the area, and I, and I caught the person who was doing all the field work for the design for that, um, you know, I was able to go and uh, go and tie in with, you know, tie in with them and provide them some middle mile fiber on, on a route that they were, you know, that they were trying to figure out how they were going to build. Um, and through that, you know, we've got a good, you know, you know, we've got, a, you know, I got, I got some fiber out of that. They got some fiber out of it. We did it. We did a swap and 
yeah, now we now you know that got me to some additional areas, which which is interesting because then you know my county went and put up you know because there's all the different funding programs out there from like CAF one, CAF two to the RDOF to um, you know the COVID money that was out there. Um, county went and put up a bunch of stuff for bid. Uh, and, and I actively communicated with them on what I was building, uh, but I was able to go and light up some of, you know, and serve some of the addresses uh, that were on the list with that, with that fiber swab um, as well. So, um, you know, in, in including lighting up, uh, you know, one of the local businesses that sells all the, you know, sells all the high pressure hoses, and hydraulics parts and stuff like that to all the farmers out, you know, out here, which is, you know, which is, which is great, you know, because they, they really needed something. And with the copper sharing agreements going, you know, going by the wayside, um, the company they said they were buying from weren't able to get access to that copper plant anymore. Right. So Jared, as you're talking about, you know, budget and all of these things that you have to buy in order to start up your network, how did you get everything started with funding from the start? You know, you, you go in with nothing. You're starting a brand new business from the bottom. How do you get started with funding? Do you have to self-source it? Did you get government funding? How did, how did you sort of start all of this with money? So, so I, I went in um, and, you know, basically from the self-source perspective and I went and I sent letters uh, you know, on paper with stamps and everything to all the people on the, you know, along the way that uh, on the route where I was going to build that first year. Um, and, uh, you know, all, all that money that that came, you know, directly, directly from me uh, for that initial piece. Um, and so, you know, went and built that. And, you know, when I went along, I, you know, I had talked to other uh, ISPs who, you know, who had done this before and, and they, it, told me about the different models that they had, you know, you know, I, I spent endless hours talking to people doing research and just figuring out what worked. And, um, you know, there were a couple different models that, that folks proposed, uh, but, but the one that worked it is, uh, it wanted to go and ask people to prepay some sum of money. And then based on how much they prepaid, they would get it. They would basically get that money as a discount on their service for a number of years in the future. So one person wrote me a check for about five thousand dollars, or wrote a check for five thousand dollars, which was great because uh, that gave the opportunity to do that. And then they got, you know, fifty dollars a month off of their bill for the first one hundred months of service, which, you know, it, it sounds like a long time, but you know, it's it's not uncommon for somebody to go and say, oh well, I, I'm going to get a car loan, and then I'll get sixty months or seventy two months or something like that. Right. And so, you know, when you're talking about, okay, now they're paying maybe, you know, $15 a month for their internet access, um, you know, and, and giving, and basically, you know, them understanding, yeah, it's a bunch of money up front for this. And then over time, they're going to, they, they're going to get an extended discount on their service that, that really ended up, that ended up being one of the ways um, for this, for the second year. It, it, so it's interesting. So I finished building it in the first year. I got this message from a friend of mine and he said, Hey, um, I think it's his niece or something. It's like my niece like bought a house nearby you. And I'm like, Oh really? Uh, you know, I'm like, and gave me the name of this road. That's like really long, you know, my, you know, like 10 plus miles long, you know, and you know, when you, when you're in a town like Ann Arbor, you know, 10 miles is, you know, perhaps all the way across the town, you know, all the way across everything. Well, as it turns out, it was she was moving kind of close, um, and so they bought this farm and they were looking to get internet access out there. Um, the the local telephone company, you know, the incumbent that does you know regular you know dial tone type services, they apparently gave them a quote for like five thousand dollars to build fiber out there. And I was, and I basically was like, that's great if you can get it. Like, let me know if that works because um, I, I haven't had luck. I haven't had luck. Um, and eventually they found out, no, that wasn't the case. They couldn't get fiber services there. Um, and they were similarly, similarly well off. Um, and so I went, I, I did the math. I figured out what it would cost to build it. I looked at both aerial and underground as an option. Uh, and, you know, to this date, I've done everything underground um, just because it's, it's actually a lot. You know, it costs not much more up front. Um, and, you know, there, there's a lot of good reasons to do that. But, uh, 
as a result of, of going and building out to them, you know, I got hit. I got about half the people, once again, you know, about half the people along the way, uh, or the homes that got passed, they signed up for service. Um, and this person went and uh, uh, they went and, uh, uh, you know, they wrote a check for basically all the construction and labor. And I wrote the wow. check for all the materials, um, which is a very, you know, like, you know, is, is very, you know, that, you know, that construction labor is the, the big piece of it. Um, and so, you know, the, we, we have a special arrangement there, but, um, you know, for what they get, but, you know, aside from that, like, so from there, then, you know, my County was, had been doing a number of studies to figure out, okay, like who doesn't have broadband and they had put stuff up for bid. And then eventually I was like, well, you know, I'll, I'll bid on the stuff that's nearby on the list. And they said, no, 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 please bid on the full project. And it was, it was like 4,000 plus addresses. And so, so once again, I spent a lot of time, a lot of windshield time driving around, looking at all of these addresses, trying to figure out what was going on um, and how, you know, and what it would take to go and service all these people. Uh, and so, you know, I took all my knowledge from, you know, year one and part of year two of doing this, of, you know, this is what it costs to do things. This might like my cost and materials. Um, and such, and spent a lot of time just figuring out, okay, well, wh how much would I need? How, uh, you know, and, and just pricing that all out and, you know, doing, doing what everyone has to do. You, you put it in a spreadsheet and you start adding up all the numbers you make all your formulas and, and, and piece it together. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of hard work piecing together all of, like all of that business part. I would say that's probably the hardest, hardest part of it all is kind of, you know, getting that, getting that part of it done. The, the technical piece, at least for me, is is you know relatively easy. You configure the equipment, you get it set up, and once that's up and going, you know, as long as no animal chews on the cable or which you know had a couple of you know you know I installed fiber in this one this one person's barn where their cows are, and you know the uh, you know uh, cows and manure is an additive system, so they just go and they you know, they, they take care of business where they are. And so they keep getting tall, you know, unless you remove it, they, the cows essentially get taller. And they, eventually <laughs> got high, they eventually got high enough that they chewed on the cat five that went to, uh, you know, that went and provided uh, the connection to the wireless router that was in there. Um, and so it's, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, yeah, you get the animals who damage, you know, a, a few of the things, but for the most part, it's, you build it if you build it right um the first time it's it's going to last a long time and you don't have to do a lot of maintenance after that on that note what is like the one thing you would tell uh somebody thinking about getting into this business what they have to do like what is the number one thing that they have to do to even start thinking about a plan or an idea of building a network um i i think that you know the first thing is be very realistic and be very honest with people. I think it's easy to get caught up in the marketing of, you know, even the self-marketing, right? And you, you know, when you're starting a business and doing things, you you have to convince your not only yourself that you're doing it, doing it and doing the right thing, but you have to be able to convince other people. But at the same time, being honest with them. So I got a call yesterday from, uh, you know, representative of this uh, one of the areas that I need to build to on the list, and they said. You know, they said, hey, you know, we're we're calling around everyone trying to figure out what the status is, you know, who's supposed to either be building broadband into our area or something like that. And I'm like, honestly, I don't have an estimate for you um, because, you know, we're currently focused building on another area um, there. I know there's another provider building nearby them uh, right now. And I said, you know, you should try and sign up with them. You know, we'll get there eventually. But, you know, we can only, you know. We can only build so fast, you know, you can only turn those permits, permits into draw, you know, the, you know, the, the field work into, into drawings, into permits, into materials so fast. Um, you know, I, I had a company, you know, when I, when I was talking to folks about construction, they said, oh yeah, you know, we could go and we could build it all for you in a month. Um, you know, like they, they had the scale to do that. And to some extent, that would be great. Just go out and build it all in a month and be done and then maybe go do something else. But, you, you know, you also have to not not go so fast that you can't, you know, that you can't scale up your business, uh, you know, in the same way. So the fact that, you, you know, 
you know, I grew in the first year, you know, I got, you know, 30, 40, 50 customers. Um, now I'm sitting up around, you know, in the mid, mid to high seventies or so. Um, and, you know, I'm talking about having to build past, you know, uh, another six to 800, you know, properties, uh, right now. Uh, and so when you start talking about, okay, that, like, that's how much I need to do. Cause I have 400, I think there's 414 addresses on my list that I need to build to. Um, and then all the people who I pass along the way. And so that's, you know, that's much bigger, but it's not, you know, it's not completely an order of magnitude bigger, but it's, it's somewhere, you know, you know, where you're not, you know, adding a zero times 10 or whatever, but it's, it's a lot more homes that I'm going to be passing because right now I pass. Uh, you know, but before, before all that expansion construction passed about, um, 120, 130 homes or so. So, I mean, it sounds like you have a lot on your plate. You have a lot that you're building, but as you know, from previous conversations, I know this isn't your only job, you know, you, you are building and running this ISP, but you also, you know, have another, another job that you are doing at the same exact time, which is incredible. So, you know, tell us a little bit about, about that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so you know, and, you know, the, the, this is the fun part where I say I'm like I, I'm incredibly realistic with people. I say, yeah, this is this is not my only job. This is this is literally my night job. I'll be out, you know, splicing fiber, making connections, doing stuff, you know, in the evening and stuff like that. I, I ask people when I go to their house, I'm like, you know, it's, it's ten o'clock too late for me to be there to hook you up to internet. And when they when they're going from satellite to fiber, they're like, I will stay up till ten o'clock to get. Here. <laughs> but um, you know. In, but you know, in in my day job, you know the uh, the the Clark Kent version of it. Um, you know, since since some people have said that I should wear a cape, which you know, I I, I believe in the Incredibles no capes thing. But um, <laughs> you know, there's uh, you know, in my daytime, uh, I, I'm sort of on the other side of the you know flip side of the equation. So we I work for this company called Akamai Technologies, and we uh, are you know one of the content delivery networks that host a variety, you know, like we run a global network where we uh, deliver content and software updates and downloads and stuff like that and video streaming for a bunch of different services and customers uh, globally. So, um, you know, I, I, I do that during the, during the daytime and then, and try and keep that up, you know, try and keep that going, um, you know, designing and architecting our global network there. And then, uh, you know, yeah, and then I spend time thinking about, okay, how, how do I build, like, you know, on, on the other, the flip side, how can I make sure that my customers are getting, you know, very good connectivity to that, those same software updates and downloads, which is, you know, the, the stuff that I was struggling with, you know, on, on my old wireless connection is, you know, I wanted to be able to consume the same streaming media stuff um, that everyone else was able to, I, and I wasn't able to. And, you know, the timing of my stuff was really, you know, was really great and advantageous for, for me and my family because I got the fiber activated to my house, ultimately, a, a, you know, a couple days before uh, school started up, you know, at, towards that beginning of, you know, that first school year, uh, that first fall for the, you know, for the pandemic. Uh, and so there I was able to, you know, get this live and, you know, with with the kids at the house, uh, they were all able to to you know do Zoom school and stuff from that. Oh, I was thinking you, I was starting to think you put them to work. Uh, we, I did some of that too. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, I've got I've got a couple of kids and, and they've definitely helped me out with uh, you know with things when you, when you're debugging the fiber and I, and I and I text the kid at home. I'm like, hey, is the uh, can you go move this fiber cable or something like that. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and stuff like that. But it, it was very funny because I, I, I got, you know, I got this nice fast connection and then um, the bandwidth limitations within my house started to become a thing because the kids were home and doing like Zoom school and we now actually had fast internet. Um, my, my sons would go and download games. And when that happened, that would um, cause the, the WebEx or whatever I was on for work to, to stutter a little bit. So I ended up having to upgrade my home network a little bit better uh, to support when they were doing that as well. So, uh, so, so they weren't going and hogging all of my bandwidth. 
Um, you know, some people said I should have liked to kick them off the network, but they, they figured out we, we've got ethernet ports in a few rooms in the house that I had wired up a long time ago. And they figured out if they plugged in, they, they would have a gigabit connection to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so is that, how much of that do you take care of with your clients then? I mean, obviously, you know, ISPs go pretty far into the home anymore. And do you have the capacity to, uh, you know, help them out in their homes? Yeah, so I I try to stay mostly out of the home network management right now because the uh, the systems that I'm using today, uh, you know, don't give me a lot of visibility into what's going on there. Um, I'm getting ready to, you know, I've I've been looking at another platform from from the optical like from the optical side uh, for going from the uh, the, the GPON based system that I'm using today to go to something that does GPON plus XGSPON in the future. Um, so once I, once I go to that, you know, that system will allow me to have better network management and visibility into the home. Uh, so, you know, I can go and identify what's going on, but one of the things I, you know, I like, because time, time is money and time is valuable. And, you know, back to the, you know, whole this is, this is my second job. One of the strategies I've taken on this is, uh, I, I tell the customers, you know, I send out these email updates, you know, like once a week or twice a week or, you know, these project updates. Um, and one of the things I say is I say, listen, you know, a wired connection is always superior to a wireless one for all your devices. Um, and so uh, I, I offer to them, I say, basically, I'll give you cat, the Cat5 cable for free for run, like for running in the house. You run, you run the cable in the house, and I'll put the connectors on it. Um, and, and I'll buy from, uh, you know, I, I've got uh, boxes full of patch cords I bought from Mono Price and all of the termination jacks and stuff and face plates for model price. And I'll basically give that away for free um, as, as part of making sure that they've got an excellent service. Um, and so I tell them, do this, make sure it's all wired up. And uh, uh, you know, one, one of the families that, that, I, that I connected, I, I just connected, I think it's the uncle or something that's related to some of the, somebody else who's, who's had service for about a year. And they, uh, you know, they were like, you know, they've got a, they've got a big house. There's, you know, that has a couple, you know, a couple, a couple different generations, but also, you know, a couple different part portions of the family, like them, the wife, the kids, they just all live together. It's actually, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting in these days because not a lot of that happens. People want to flee the nest and whatever, but they, you know, they've got a different family than I think some of us, but we wanted to get away. Um, and such and spread our wings and you know and they've they stayed uh close together and they're like yeah we can stream six different six different things all at once with the service um you know, because because they've got their, they've got that place wired up nicely so it's yeah you just hand them off the connection but thankfully a lot of the customers have been pretty sophisticated as far as that goes i've been lucky to this point um because i know that's not always going to be the case on that note, did you have you had anything really interesting to happen when you've been working with clients that maybe you haven't shared with some of the other, um, you know, since your clients are your neighbors? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of interesting things. People people have tried to bribe me with like, you know, this one woman. She keeps sending me messages, being like, "Come on over, I'll make you a nice Italian meal with meatballs and stuff. You can get internet to my house." Um, <laughs> you know, I like I, I, I I've had. You know, people offer me eggs and, you know, like anyone who has chickens, you know, because a lot of these areas are, you know, a bit more rural. So that, you know, I'd say a decent percentage of the people, they, they have chickens or their neighbor has chickens, right? So, you know, I get everything from fresh eggs to, uh, <laughs> you know, to to whatever else offer, offered to me. And I was like, yeah, you know, it, you know, we'll get there. It, it takes time. You know, it's one of those things. It, it takes time to get all this stuff built out. Yeah, that's that's I think you know to one of your earlier questions as well. That's I think one of the things I would tell my, the you know the younger version of myself you know a few years back is like be a little bit more patient. It's gonna it's definitely gonna take some time to to get all of this done. Um, yeah, and so so with that you know what's what does the future hold for you? You know, are you planning on 
expanding your network, applying for, for additional, you know, broadband funding. I talk to clients all day long about, well, there's BEAD, there's Reconnect, there's state available funding, there's broadband grants like crazy right now. Are you planning on applying for additional funding? Are you planning on expanding to more counties or more homes? Um, what's your sort of, what does the future hold for you? So the, the future right now, um, and, and this is this is the exact same thing I tell people when they call me up and they, they want me to expand to their area as well, is I say, you know, listen, I have, I've got about 38 miles I need to build. That's going to keep me busy through the end of, you know, through the end of 23. Right now, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do after that. But the, you know, there's this thing that I call the next home problem, right, is that so I've got I've got an address list. I need to build to all of those homes, and you end up having the person who's literally the next house over, um, you know, just outside of that coverage area. That's that's what that woman is who's offering me, you know, a nice fine cooked Italian, you know, with meatballs and and, and everything, like a nice, really amazing cooked uh, cooked dinner. And um, you know, she she's the next house, right? And so she's just literally the next house. And so it's like, okay how can I design and how can I adjust my network such that, you know, I'm able to, to hit that person uh, and get them service. And so as you do this, you know, as the radius of the network grows, the number of next houses increases mm -hmm. um, from that perspective. Just a little ripple effect. Yeah. It's yeah, it's absolutely that case. So I'm, I went from, you know, I had, probably two and a half, three miles of network to start, you know, at the end of year one to now I'm somewhere around, you know, between 14 to 18. I'm like I've got, I've got a bunch that's, you know, you know, they're out literally boring today. And so I'm not sure how many feet they built today, but I know they built more. Um, so, you know, I can't, I can't keep track of it right now. Um, I haven't gone back and counted it up and measured it. So, you know, the future for me, it's, I'm going to build the stuff that I've committed to build. And then, um, because there are all of the, you know, a bunch of these programs and some of them overlap, mm -hmm. um, my goal is, I, I do have a short-term goal of being the first mover to go and get in in a lot of these environments. I want to be the first one in with the service, uh, you know, and look at, way, look at ways and places where I can close the gap, you know, close those gaps to that next house and find, find approaches that work. Uh, the one approach I found works well from a private funding perspective is, uh, and this worked well for me last year is, um, I, and I ended up building almost a whole extra mile of network by doing this is I said, I offered to people, I said, um, we can, I can absolutely build to you and, and permit this section, but, you know, it's that labor cost. That's the, that's the lion's share of it. So I told people, I said, listen, you know, I, I don't care how you divide it up, but this, you know, I need people to call me and tell me I'm willing to pledge this amount of money. Like, I'm not going to ask you for the money until I build it. Um, but, you know, once once we hit that point where we're going to do it, you know, then, yeah, start sending me some checks. Um, and figured out. And But I said, this is a 100% service credit for you. You get a free install. And it counts as 100% service credit at your address. And so I had people offer anywhere from, you know, one year's, worth of service, which, you know, is $900 or something to prepay for a year, uh, you know, up to people who offered, you know, five, four, five, $8,000, um, you know, to be able to get connected. Um, and so, and so, you know, I'm looking for those opportunities, but also not everybody can do that, um, mm -hmm. you know, from that perspective. So my goal right now is to build, build stuff. I'm busy for at least another year. Um, based on my math, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe, my, you know, my current contractor who's building stuff is, they're making a lot more progress than I expected. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, think, and things are going really well. They're, they're enjoying working for me and I'm enjoying the work they're doing for me. So uh, it may be that I get done early and I'll look at other stuff, but the, our county funding program uh, was to fund everything that wasn't already kind of covered by an existing program. So mm -hmm. wasn't covered by the, either the prior CAFs or RDOF-1 or RDOF-2. Um, that was their gap filling project. Um, and that's that's what I built, you know, that's what I did. So um, in our area, we're not gonna have any, you know, addresses that are available for the bead funding. Um, 
but I, I'm also not sure how far out I want to build. Um, and knowing some of these other companies are going to be building in nearby, um, you know, I'm, you know, I, I don't have the scale that some of them have to go and, uh, you know, you know, from a capital perspective and otherwise to go and build in, because uh, some of them are like electric electric companies, you know, or you know, or the or the big companies like a like a Comcast or a Charter. Mm -hmm. Did you did you ask the county? Um if they would consider funding the calf area since that didn't have the same requirements as like the fiber builds that we're, you know, seeing now. So I, I didn't specifically ask them for that, but one of the areas that they, cause I went through about, I think it was three to four different iterations of address lists they gave me. So, because I went and I turned in a bid for building the entire, uh, the entire county um, just based on where my existing network was. Um, and figured out how to connect all of the, those addresses and those parcels, you know, in that initial list. And um, one of the things that they did is they also talked to everybody who had received either CAF or RDOF uh, money for different services. And they actually added some addresses into the list uh, later on that were originally funded through one of those other programs where. Um, uh, so one of the companies was supposed to build with a, uh, you know, with wireless service, uh, and they went and uh, uh, went and put those addresses and added added those to the overall address list, um, you know, throughout the time because they went and they figured out like they wanted to coordinate because they were trying to do a gap filling program, right? They wanted to fund the places that weren't going to be built and and provide that, and so they went and they talked to to everyone. Uh, I, I happened to get a few more addresses because I know some of them that were originally committed to another company that was going to build, build in wirelessly that did not happen or what, or wasn't going to happen in time. So I have, you know, I'm trying to build out to that area right now. That's cool. Um, I it, guess, it was, uh, it, I'll, 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 just, you know, okay. It was a long iterative process. It took over a year, took over, almost exactly a year or over, or over a year from the time that I got the original bid, you know, I turned in the original response to the time that, you know, I had a signed contract in hand and was ready to actually start doing things. Right. I think I, that that timeline is helpful. Um, and thank you for, for answering all, all of our many questions. I feel like Kevin and I could ask you questions all day long. Um, and I cannot wait to see your HBO movie with the Prius <laughs> and the cows and all of these like awesome anecdotes and you, you know, your neighbor cooking you that, that Italian meal. Um, I can just foresee it being, being an HBO movie in, in a couple of years. Um, but the, the audience has a couple of questions that they've been throwing in the chat. So I want to kind of move into question and answer, answer time. So the audience has time to, to get their questions answered. So the first one um, is from George, and it says, um, what were some books that helped you with the fundamentals of building an ISP and networking? Um, I, I didn't, you know, I really didn't spend a lot of time reading books on doing that. You know, I ended up working for uh, the, my first ISP in 1995, um, and I worked for this company called CICNet, which was one of the regional NSF net, <laughs> networks that was... Uh, you know, funded from the National Science Foundation. So a lot of the original internet stuff came out of, you know, ARPA, DARPA type funding. Uh, and so I just spent a lot of time just learning, you know, uh, you know, learning about that. Um, but the, the book that actually got me into the, you know, was kind of the gateway into a lot of the stuff was uh, one called The Cuckoo's Egg uh, by Clifford Stoll. And what that covered was, uh, you know, that, that was one of the early, you know, computer hackers, um, you know, back at, this was during the Cold War days and stuff and uh, kind of covered that. And, you know, I, I was reading about that as a, you know, as a, you know, early teenager and went and talked about this Unix system. And I was like, Unix? Uh, well, that's, that's probably going to be, you know, interesting and useful. And, you know, <laughs> Now, you know, and I was like, I'm going to go learn some stuff about that. And so I called, so I dialed up the local, 
bulletin board system, you know, with modem, you know, probably 1200 baud or something back in the day, uh, and went and did a search for Unix. And I found out there was actually some public access Unix servers that were a local call for me, you know, and that's how I got initially exposed to a lot of the networking stuff and, and Unix stuff. And, you know, for th those of you who don't know, like, you know, almost, er almost all the technology that you're using today or interact with has some sort of Unix underpinning on it. Like if you have an Android phone that's running a, you know, uh, a version of Unix called Linux on there. And so it's, you know, it's a very common framework to exist in like almost all, almost all the technologies today. So I got, you know, I got very lucky in that. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so, so the next question is from, from Dennis. So to gauge the interest level, do you knock on every door or try to call a sort of town hall meeting to discuss with neighbors or potential customers uh, in the original first year? So I, I went and I sent letters to all of them. Uh, and that, that seemed to work out. One of them, one of the roads involved was a, was a private road and they had their private road, their, pri their road association meeting coming up. Um, for deciding, you know, I guess how much gravel or whatever to pour on the road. And, mm -hmm. and they said, come on, come on down, um, you know, and we'll, uh, you know, and I talked to them about what I was doing and what I was planning to do. And, uh, you know, got, got to meet all, you know, everyone who was there at the house because, you know, neighborhood things, not everybody shows up, but um, that, that worked out relatively, you know, relatively well. And that's, you know, that's the case. When, uh, when my contractors were out doing work, I gave them little, little flyers and cards to hand people as well. So, um, you know, I, in talking to a bunch of the other companies that do this, they say the number one advertise, piece of advertising is a, a construction crew working out in front of your house, um, mm -hmm. you know, or nearby. You, know, you people, get someone coming outside asking, hey, what are you doing? And, yeah. you know, spur up the conversation. Yeah, exactly. And the one, and the one crew, um, they, they go and, you know, when they're working, you know, in the right away in front of somebody's house, they go and they knock on the door. And you say, by the way, we're out here and stuff like that. And, and, and I want, you know, I've had people who wear, you know, their phone lines or whatever they're, you know, uh, have gotten cut or damaged when the contractor's working there. And, uh, you know, and, and I apologize to them and, and, and stuff like that. And I say, yeah, let me know, let me know if something's not quite right. And, uh, you know, afterwards. And so, you know, we've gone back and we've added, you know, grass seed and dirt in places where, you know, they came in with a big machine when it was wet and then later it was dry and now there's a there was a divot there in the person's yard uh you know their tractor guys you know their tractor they used for mowing got stuck there awesome um so our our next question is to to try to make it easier to install are you looked at plug and play such as corning has introduced so I have, I've looked at the different, you know, like there's all the OptiTap and like the, the stuff where you can just go like OTE type stuff where you can just go and screw, screw on something. The issue is my customers, one of them, they have, uh, they're 2000 feet off the road. And so for me to stock, you know, or ask, you know, Millennium to stock the variability of, you know, of cables that I would need to be able to install or do a repair um, for that. Um, would be problematic. And so we end up custom making all of the drop cables that go up to the customer homes. Um, just because, yeah, you know, one person might have, you know, 50 feet to their house from, from the handhold or the tie-in location. Somebody else, like I said, is 2,000, you know, they've got a 2,000 foot long driveway, um, you know, with a culvert in the middle, like, in, you know, and some drainage in the middle of it or something. And so, uh, you know, the, the construction necessary for each one is different, you know, is different. So, yeah, those those solutions, um, like they look interesting, but the areas I'm in, you know, some of them are, I'm going. It's not practical. It's not it's not practical. You know, I'm going. You know, one of them I've got. I go two thousand feet down the road, and there's one house. And the next house is another two thousand feet down the road. So you know, I guess that's like three two thousand foot drop cables I could have used, maybe. But you know. That's, you know, that, that ends up just really being complex and just, you know, and, and one of the other things is the customers really like to be able to pick where the boxes go on their house and where the cables run in their yard. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when you custom make the cable, you have that flexibility. You show up with a, 
you know, a trailer with trailer full of cable and, and you're able to go and, uh, and go and run like a, you know, run something up to them specifically uh, and run it the way they want. Gotcha. Um, we've got a question from Hitton. He wants to know how you're connecting your network to like another provider. What are you doing for internet? Yeah, so I buy from uh, two other local Michigan, you know, I'm, I'm based in Michigan. I buy from two other Michigan providers. One of them is 123Net and the other is ECDNet. Um, you know, they both are sort of, uh, you know, they're, they're not big national players, but they're definitely big regional players um, in the market. Um, and so I get slightly different services from both of them, uh, you know, but I get internet access from the two of them and, and we do, uh, uh, we both meet in a handhold, uh, you know, in different handholds, um, you know, about two, two miles north of my house. So, um, and just talking to, you know, those companies and explaining what you're doing is, is really you know, is really helpful. You go and you say, hey, you know, I can, I can meet you here. I can meet you there. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when one of them was running behind schedule and the other one called me and cold called, you know, cold called me back one day and said, oh yeah, hey, we can do this. And they were worried about the permits. And I, it was funny because the permit drawings actually showed, yep, we're going to go up this pole, you know, because I anticipated somebody, you know, I would want to tie in at multiple places. So we, we put all of them on the permit drawings. And so they ultimately looked at it like, Oh wow, we were, they were able to go and tie in there um, because it was already on the drawings, and so they they were very they were very excited about that. If you're meeting them at a handhold, how are you managing that connection with them? So uh, that that comes back on fiber into uh, back to my head end, which is still my basement, um, you know, and, and and such there. So that comes back there, and then. Um, you know, they either gave me the right optic, you know, one of them's a DWDM optic, the other one's a, you know, a bi-directional optic because one of them, they've got a MUX in their, in their splice case and the other one, um, we go back, you know, a couple, you know, uh, you know, a number of miles to them as well. So, you know, meet them with slightly different technologies both, but, uh, you know, that works out. Um, the one provider, they, they really wanted to place a CPE device um, at my home. Uh, I happen to, you know, because I've been doing big, big networking stuff, um, you know, I told them, no, I really did not want to have, there was this, Cisco made this device, the Catalyst 6500, mm -hmm. and we know how loud it is and how big it is. And I said, no, like, you know, um, come back, you know, either come back with something better, or like offer me a different solution. Uh, and so, you know, we went and, you know, we figured out something else that, that works. Um, and, you know, and recently they re-architected some of their network and, uh, you know, I had to do a little bit more config work that they probably would have done if they managed it, a device, you know, here, but, um, you know, it, it keeps my power bill down and uh, the noise down. So, you know, when the kids are gaming in the room next door, they, uh, you know, they're not hearing too much from my basement data center. Yeah, that's actually in your house. Yeah, yet again, another reason for your HBO movie. <laughs> Um, another another question is when when you have to do aerial, do you try avoiding renting space from power poles and run your own poles? Uh, I've considered that um, one of the companies, uh, you know, so when we were boring uh, one of the sections, we uh, a contractor got stuck a couple times, you know, underground boring uh, boring this this rather uh, complex area. Um, and, and, you know, consider setting poles for that and such, but I've really wanted to not, not do anything aerial. So I, do, uh, I have so far avoided ending up on anything aerial unless it's maintained by somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have considered that, um, you know, in a few places, just setting my own poles and, and stuff. Cause you know, uh, the, the poles aren't that, aren't that expensive when, you know, in the big picture, but. Uh, you know, you do, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of effort to, you know, to do that. And I've climbed poles before. Uh, I don't like it um, personally. So I'd rather That's not. what you got kids for, right? <laughs> uh, there, yeah. Unf <laughs> yeah. Unf unfortunately, the one only recently turned 18. So um, OSHA might have some issues with that. 
Yeah, yeah. So um, if, if you're from OSHA, um, I lied about all the ages of, of my children. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, because I value their privacy. <laughs> the next question is from Dave. And I, he must know you because he said at one point you were going to let me configure cake. Did you end up using that? No, Dave. Um, we should we should catch up soon. Um, I, I saw him pop in as well on the video. Yeah, because um, because um, one of the and hopefully none of my customers see this, but one of one of the big secrets um, as well for for me ensuring I have good customer satisfaction is uh, I don't actually shape any of them. So everyone, everyone, you know, the slowest piece piece of the network is actually in their house. So it's at least gigabit to their home. Yeah. Uh, and so that way, everything is just everything is there on their side. And I, I, it looks like Dave was commenting in the chat on that, too. So I yeah, he's following up with it. And I figured that's where he was going with it. So I kind of got a giggle out of it. But I was yeah. it was funny. That was one of the questions I had in my mind when you're talking. I was like, OK, I mean, you really don't have a high level of management when you you know, you pretty much got this up as a wide open network. So I was curious if you had any real management tools from a client perspective. So yeah. you're just charging for whatever, right? You just charge them a monthly rate and you don't, whatever they use, they use, you're not monitoring it, nothing like that, right? They, yeah, they, yeah. I mean, I've got data on it. So, you know, people sign up for their rate plan and such, but, um, you know, because it's, because it's my secondary job, um, you know, I, one of the goals is to have them not, have my phone not ring. Uh, and so, you know, cause you're, cause you're optimizing on all the things and so I don't, I don't want my phone to ring. Um, and that's, that's a really, you know, that is an important optimization on my side um, is I don't, I don't, you know, anytime somebody calls you, um, that's, you know, that costs you money, you know, that costs you time. And so yeah. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't shape them. I don't restrict what CPE they can use. A lot of them use either like these, you know, uh, I, I tend to recommend people get these, uh, the Aero Pro the Aero Pro series. Um, cause that, that tends to work out relatively well for them. Uh, you know, it's fairly consumer friendly from that perspective and they can manage it from their smartphone. Um, you know, I've, I've gone and looked at, uh, you know, I've looked at a bunch of different systems like Calyx has some, Calyx has some CPEs, Nokia has some CPEs, yeah. you know, a lot, a lot of, you know, smart home management stuff like that. But, um, you know, like I said, on my side, the goal is, you know, you know, my, my goal is because I buy, I buy and I deal with bandwidth stuff in my day job, uh, you know, and I know what the consumer actually uses because I can observe it. Um, you know, I, I know where I have some leeway, um, you know, on this side. So, so yeah, the, the slowest connection is the, the gigabit ethernet cable at their house. Um, you know, and, and in a couple of cases, some, one of them has this system called Arlo, which I've never even heard of before. Yeah. Um, and, and that one, it, for some reason, it looks like it's only syncing up at a hundred megs. So, um, you know, if, if they, you know, if they swap out their system to, to something that can do more than a hundred meg, they'll, they'll see faster service. But, um, what, one of the interesting things for me was at the beginning when I, when I got my house connected and I went and I looked at my bandwidth utilization, I hit play on the, on the TV in my bedroom. And I watched the TV in my bedroom pull initially 150 megabits on the wired Ethernet connection there, mm -hmm. just when it was pre-buffering everything. And so, you know, the ability to burst up on those speeds is really valuable. For sure. Yeah. I uh, <laughs> I got so many more questions. Um, <laughs> we don't have, we have enough have time, Kevin. Kind of <laughs> yeah. I'm just fascinated by this because there's all sorts of requirements with... Uh, you know, with content delivery and everything else, I, I I have to ask: Have you had anybody that was stealing content yet on your network, and you've had to help um, investigate that? Uh, I've got you know, you know, I've gotten the usual like DMCA notices and stuff like that. Um, one of the things, you know, for the more technically savvy customers, uh, you know, I've gone and approached them, and you know, and and you know, I can tell who they are, you know, just because that's. You know, I'd say that's my primary livelihood is talking to people like that as well. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can kind of, we, we can sniff each other out um, in those conversations. And I, I say, because <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll go and they'll be like, oh, well, can I, you know, have a static IP address or this? And I'm like, 
well, if I give you a static IP address, like you're going to be my first customer with that. Um, you know, and it, you know, and then if I ever change my network, you know, it's more likely I'm going to break you. Do you really want a static IP address? Yeah. Um, and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I, I've also told them, I'm like, yep, just don't, don't, uh, don't BitTorrent stuff. Like don't, you know, don't go and steal content because, you know, I don't want to have to turn you in. Yeah. And so it's, it is that, per, that personal talking to. And so, um, but one, one of the people who I said that to, they went and, uh, you know, they gave me some fresh maple syrup from the trees on their property um, that, that they, they had done. And then later they, uh, uh, they did get one DMCA notice that I had to go and you know, I forwarded it on to them. Uh, but it, it was definitely, uh, you know, one of those things. Um, and then, uh, you know, somebody, I see somebody else, uh, if that's the Ryan who I think it is, uh, yes, we have IPv6 support. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of remaining questions that we haven't had time to to get to. So Jared, I'm curious if you're open for me dropping your email in the chat. So those people that we didn't get ans to answer their questions, if you're okay for them to send you a personal email. Some of them were about permitting and you know a couple of resource sharing. Uh, would you be okay with that? Yeah, yeah, and, and I did see one of them go by here, which I which I want to just personally, um, you know, mm -hmm. personally comment on. Um, because I, I have an extra, I have a minute or two to go over. Um, I hope it's what uh, actor is going to portray you. So <laughs> uh, we can come back to that one in a second. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I will say, you know, I saw the question go by in the chat about, you know, like what, what did Millennium do to help me succeed? And, and uh, this is one where I really want to like say thank you, uh, give a personal thanks here, here in public. Um, to Antoine, because he's really been essential to helping helping me succeed over here. Um, you know, he set me up with the contractor who, who's done the underground boring for me for, you know, the first two years. Um, it helped me out with, you know, like all the materials. Um, didn't laugh at me when I showed up in a Prius and I'm shoving it full of hand tools and stuff like that <laughs> uh, and, and all that. So, um, you know, that's, that's the type of thing where, uh, you know, you know, Millennium's done a lot of introductions for me to these other companies and such, uh, you know, and, uh, and that just, you know, and, and, you know, that has really been essential for, you know, for my success, because I wouldn't have been able to do it without, you know, without that, because I think it would have been hard for some of the contractors to take some guy, you know, seriously about doing stuff without that personal introduction. So, um, that, that, that's Antoine one of the and the Antoine and the rest of the team in Michigan are great people to work with, and I'm growing to to love them. That's for sure. Yeah, so th they've they've really been essential to my success, and so you know when they, you know when they take a call from me, you know a few minutes after closing time because I'm doing my day job and up till five o'clock, and I'm like that, uh, you know it's 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 that that little, you know all those little touches and stuff like that that. You know that's really really helped me uh, succeed so i just want you know i want to comment on that so that's that was well, yeah well thank you and i i you know we talked about this before and it wasn't meant to be a you know any type of a commercial plug for us or no for, no but know, i i did you like really I said, appreciate that yeah we appreciate the feedback and all that really belongs to you know, to Antoine and the Michigan team, and they're they're great to work with, and so I really appreciate that. And um, I think on behalf of everybody on the call, I really appreciate your time. I feel like we need a part two or something because I got like a thousand questions I'd love to ask, and we've talked a couple times even before this webinar. So I just want to thank you. Is there anything you wanted to wrap up with to say to everybody? Uh, thank you for coming. <laughs> I hope you found it interesting. Um, yeah. And, it was and, fascinating. And I look forward to the HBO movie and whoever your actor may be. <laughs> yeah, people, people are posting in their wins part two and stuff. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, sir. We much appreciate it. Thank you, Jared. Still be in contact. Yeah, thank, thank, thanks for putting this together and organizing it. It was, it was fun. Our, our pleasure. All right. Bye now. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.